Hello and welcome to the video and the first part of this new series of videos aimed at providing sour beer creation knowledge for beginners. So in this video series I will be embracing the funk and talking and demonstrating almost everything sour beer. Whilst this video is not sponsored or paid in any way, I did get some kind assistance from Lullamond Brewing from a visual and an informational perspective. Lullamond are clearly very serious about bringing to market an increasing range of useful products to assist brewers in souring, so they were an invaluable source of help in making this video series. My thanks go out to them. It is fair to say that the commercial market for sour beer styles has been rapidly growing in recent years. We have seen a very large amount of diversity in sour styles, pushing forward much creativity and a varied amount of different flavours and effects. Home brewers have also embraced the funk in large numbers and this has become a growth area of home brewing too. Going back in history, beer fermentation dates back to 7000 BC and it is believed that many beers were produced sour at this time simply due to a lack of knowledge. The British were the first to recognise that single strain yeast created beers that did not necessarily sour with age. The Belgians and Germans however developed new ways to create sour beers with control. In contemporary times in the US and other parts of Europe some craft breweries learnt the art of souring in Belgium or Germany and took home this knowledge and began producing their own sour beers. This has led to further discovery and creativity within the sour beer market. So let's now look at what you need to know about this so that you can begin your sour beer brewing journey. Firstly, the souring process involves introducing various key microorganisms into your beer. So let's start by looking at some of those first. Here is some key information on screen in regards to lactobacillus, or lacto as it is commonly known and its key characteristics. This bacteria has a diverse range of subspecies and produces lactic acid. This is used to preserve food and drink and was first discovered in milk, which contains the sugar lactose, which led to the naming of lactic acid. A lacto-fermentation will involve this bacteria plus yeast. This does not just apply to beer either, it also includes foods like fermented yogurt, milk, olives, sauerkraut to name but a few. This bacteria breaks down sugar and then lactic acid is formed which lowers the pH and leads to sourness. This environment then leads to more lactic acid growth and helps prevent the growth of other microorganisms. This process when coupled with fermentation has been used as a very simple yet very effective preservative for literally thousands of years. The bacteria and yeast selection can be tweaked to suit the application which within beer will be aimed at flavour and performance. It needs to be understood that the performance of lacto itself is governed by a suitable temperature. Hop presence within the wort is also a big factor for effective use. Due to this it is popular to introduce lacto before hops are used in the brewing process. Common effects when using lacto within beer are usually refreshing due to the pronounced citrus tangy flavour along with a measured level of sourness. Like lacto, Pediococcus or Pedio as it is commonly referred as is also a bacteria. It can be found naturally in plant material and fruit and produces lactic acid and reduces pH in the same way that lacto does. Its effects though are far more extreme compared to lacto and its use creates a sharper and harsher taste in part due to the lower pH level that it provides. It also has a greater tolerance to hops but is slower at souring when compared to lacto. This bacteria is often paired with bread, which is up next. Finally, let's now look at Brettanomyces, which is commonly referred to as Brett. This word in full, translated from Greek, literally means British fungus or British yeast, and was first discovered when a study was made into the spoilage of English ales. Brett is essentially a type of wild yeast that grows naturally on fruit skins. The flavours you will gain from Brett in beer are very distinctive. The fermentation time is a little longer than regular yeast. When used in 100% form, the aging process is usually going to last between 2 to 3 months, unless it is used for a Brett IPA, which is usually not aged as this will lead to a decline in hop presence. There are a variety of different strains of Brett, I will cover a couple here now. Firstly, Brett B is famous, or some would say infamous, for its rather odd mix of funky horse blanket, wet dog, and some would say rotting cheese. This is not to say that this is without its fans though, but it is a simple question of taste. However, Brett C has the characteristics of being funky, fruity, spicy, with some tartness that is created by acetic acid, which is the Brett's specific acid contribution. 
The trick here is to use a strain that suits your recipe's intention, of course. Many modern breweries are also using bread, but this has to be strictly controlled to ensure that the desired effect on the end beer is in place. Brett is notorious for being very fussy about its needs and requirements to work, and as such is microbiologically speaking not the easiest yeast to work with. It is in fact an area of specialisation. I will now compare these to increase understanding to complete this section. Lacto is known for having a clean taste because it doesn't produce much apart from lactic acid. German sour beers like Berliner Weisse use lacto. Brett, however, being a yeast, is the total opposite and contributes a great deal in terms of flavour. However, Brett works much more slowly than both Lacto and Pedio. Pedio, like Brett, can also contribute many funky flavours and aromas into beer. It is often combined with Brett to give it more fuel to work with. Sour beers like Lambics and Flanders Reds will use Brett or a combination of Brett with Pedio. As you can see on screen now, there are various techniques and applications for souring. Where you see the shortening lab, this is short for lactic acid bacteria. As you can see, these techniques range wildly in terms of time and equipment needed. In some cases, but certainly not all, this will also mean that certain equipment like fermenters and tools will only be able to be used for sour beers in the future. Barrel souring is really going to be much more specialised, time consuming and potentially more expensive compared to the other options. Co-fermentation is open to more people and is certainly something to look at once you feel you have some souring experience under your belt. Kettle souring is certainly a popular area, it provides a nice quick process and by the time your wort hits your fermenter it has already been boiled, so no concerns here when it comes to your equipment, whatever it is made of. It is essentially an easy method for those new to this to take in and replicate, so to provide this ideal starting point let us now look at what is involved here. Here is a quick look at this process. In my next video of this new series I will be showing the various stages of this on camera and will share my full recipe at the same time. Part 2 of this series is also released on the same day as part 1, so if you wish you can check that out next. Following this I will then be adding to the series with further sour beer related content. It's time to pucker up and embrace the funk. If you would like to discuss this or any other beer related topic then why not join this YouTube channel's Facebook group. We have over 6,000 friendly and helpful members of all levels of experience for you to interact with. Check out the video on this channel that looks at the group's aims and rule set. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate then please like this video on YouTube and if you've not done so already then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!